Hello, Jackie. Hey. Hi, it's great to have you as a part of the Conversations with Black Women Who Coach series. I'm really thankful that you agreed to do this um, and I appreciate having you. Um, before we even get started, I want people to know Jackie is one of my favorite people and Jackie is also my coach. Um, and so when people hear me talk about how important coaches have been to me personally and how important having a coach has been in terms of my redesigning and transforming my life, you are one of the coaches I'm talking about. So I'm try still trying to get the other one on, but you are one of the coaches I'm talking about. So I want people to know this is my business coach, Jackie, um, who I owe a lot in terms of sitting in Mexico, living the life that I'm living. You are the person who has really been helpful in terms of helping me get my business off the ground and thinking in realistic terms about you know, what I wanted to do to sustain myself once I decided to change my life. So I wanna publicly thank you for everything that you have done so far and that you continue to do um, mm -hmm. in terms of helping me and keeping me accountable um, on my goals. So tell me a little bit about yourself and what you do. So first of all, I wanna say thank you back. It is a absolute pleasure to work with you. It's funny because a lot of our conversations too are about like dream, your dream life and what does a dream life look like, right? And I think for me, part of what my dream life looked like was having dream clients of which you are one. So <laughs> oh, <thank you. laughs> I, I, I thank you for that like immensely because I feel this strong calling to help women, particularly black women, just lead their best life possible. I think that so often, particularly like we as black women are under this are under this mindset that suffering has to be involved in living in a to get to an amazing life. And that is so, so not true. And I can honestly say right now, at almost 43 years old, I'm definitely living my best life possible. Uh, and I truly enjoy helping black women achieve that. And I know for a lot of them, it is that understanding of finances, right? Like these golden handcuffs. Mm -hmm. And so what I do, besides living my best life with my, um, with my little baby, my toddler, I who will be three in August, wow. I travel full time. Um, so I just, wherever the wind takes me, whatever I'm interested in, I stay, it can be somewhere between eight, nine months, two weeks. 10 months, two years, I've been to over 70 countries at this point, um, lived for over a year or two years in at least eight countries. Wow. Um, and I have, I call myself a serial, a serial entrepreneur, serial businesswoman, a serial coach, um, and just really just enjoy one, helping women if they choose to either move abroad, become a d digital nomad, achieve location independence, which I kind of call myself, like because I can work and do what I want from anywhere in the world and I can do it with my baby and I'm world schooling her. So even though she's three, like she's got a couple languages down and she definitely is just learning by traveling the world. And so I help women, one, figure out what they want to do with their lives. Like, what do they want to do? And then how, what's the plan to get there and kind of also eliminating those blockers of I can't do it, right? I think especially, um, and when I decided to, I really, really wanted to get into coaching, I said, I'm going to do a lot of women who are kind of like myself, even mm -hmm. though I've been crisscrossing the globe for 25 plus years now, I realized sometimes you get to a point in your life and you're like, man, I make six figures or I make very, you know, very high five figures and how the heck I got a mortgage, I got student loans, how the heck am I just gonna pick up and like say, bump it, I got a couple kids, I got kids in private school, whatever your thing may be, like it's not possible for me to do what I wanna do because I have all these quote unquote responsibilities, right? And so part of what I help do is help women, one, figure out that, yeah, girl, like if you can dream it, you can live it. It's right. just a matter of you getting over that hurdle of saying, turning I can't into I can and figuring out a plan to make it happen. And then understanding the realities of what either moving abroad or traveling full time. Like so many people see my Instagram and they see my Facebook and my blog and they're like, oh, I want to travel full time. And it's not for everybody, 
right? Like it's not for everybody. You got to really get your mind right <laughs> and decide if it's for you. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can't move abroad or you can't do whatever, uh, but like it just what suits your personality. Like a dream life for me is different from a dream life for you, right? And getting understanding and helping w- women also really get comfortable with like their finances and their numbers, right? Like most women think, you know, me, coming from like the Bay Area, people think, all right, like if I don't got at least 10K a month, like how am I going to live anywhere? And then I'm like, well, I went from spending 5K a month just on my nanny to now I spend in Guatemala, I spend $1,000 a month total, right? But like my income really hasn't decreased that much. That means I'm just taking my funds and I'm investing them to build what I hope will be generational wealth for my daughter and myself. Um, so I really just enjoy getting... Getting in those conversations. I'm sorry. Really, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, one of the things I really enjoy about working with you is that not only as you know, you call yourself you're the original OG um, when it comes to um, being location independent, but you are the original reality checker and the original <laughs> making me be, you, people be realistic. And I think, especially how firm you are about pushing about the numbers, has really mm-hmm. been helpful for me. Um, as well as helping me be more realistic about what I actually need, because I think you're right. A lot of times we think we need to make the same amount of money to be comfortable. Um, and you don't, but you still have to be very clear about what, what you do need to make to be sustainable in order to be able to maintain the lifestyle that mm-hmm. you want to have. And you've been really good at like, you, I don't think I've ever had a conversation with you where you did not ask me. Okay, so what's happening with the numbers? Yeah, exactly. Like, exactly. And that has been really helpful because I'm like, okay, I got to get ready for this call with Jackie. So I need to be, because I am not a budget. I have never been very good about numbers and that's one in budgets. I hate math. I always hated math. And I hate, you know, thinking about what, well, not thinking about money. I hate worrying about money. Yes. I've always tried to position myself to not have to worry about money. But as you said, then you kind of enslave yourself to a certain extent because you, feel that you have to have, you're, you're working all the time just to make all this money because to maintain your lifestyle in the United States, you, to be comfortable, mm-hmm. you have to make a lot of money and it becomes kind of a prison to a certain extent. And so part of freeing yourself is also being clean about money, but also realizing that you don't need all the things that you think yes. that you need as well. Um, so for you, why is coaching important? Why is it something that you think is important to do? Coach is important because one, I wouldn't be where I was without some amazing coaches. I mean, I, I think that if, if you're going to be a good coach, you're coached as well. Um, you just have to kind of live and breathe it. And I think we all are at points of our lives where we don't necessarily see what's possible for us. And sometimes we need to have that outside person, right? Like you and I both went to law school. So we're both familiar with like Socratic method, right? And like when your law school professor in front of all your classmates starts asking you questions, forcing you to really think about like a particular like case or a particular set, set of facts. And I think we all, to some extent, need that in our lives, right? Like we need somebody to both lift us when we're down, push us, make us face some of our fears. And I, I absolutely agree. I mean, I have, I have quite a few clients. I try to keep my clients, my client post small, but I have quite a few clients who, um, when it comes to like money and like finances, it's not like they don't have good finances, right? But it's just that like those kind of those conversations that get into like the nitty gritty of like, what actually do you spend your money on? Mm-hmm. And like, what do you want to spend your money on in the future? Like, what does that, what does that look like? And like, even understanding like, things. And I think because so many of my clients are just so many like intelligent, like high profile, like women who are very, very successful in their professional careers, they don't get that a lot of things that are very easy for them are Mm -hmm. not so easy for other people. And that those are all marketable, sellable skills that they can actually make money from. Yeah. So it's just, I mean, I, I, you know, like when you see something and it clicks, right? And the reality about coaching is that people think, well, like, I don't know what kind of coach I want or what I need. And it's like, shop around. There's a million different kinds of coaches. And that's a wonderful thing. People are like, always like, aren't you stressed that there's like a whole bunch of coaches? And I'm like, no, because there's a coach for everybody, right? Like, there are some people who I never, ever want to work with. And that's okay. And they never, ever want to work with me. Like, I give them a headache. I'm annoying. Like, they don't like to be pressed or pushed the way I push people. And that's okay because there's a coach who won't do that. Yep. 
right? Yeah. Like, so, and, and, I, and I really do like people who are driven, who want to see something happen, but just don't necessarily like know. And, and most of my clients in their everyday life are pretty type A. Like they know what they want most of the time. It's just like, now they've just kind of got a couple, couple, couple roadblocks and they're just trying to figure out like, what's the pathway forward? Um, and also my clients, most of my clients don't, don't like to be broke and are broke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That would definitely be me as one of your clients. Um, so one of the key things for me in working with you and um, my other executive coach that I worked with for a couple of years is that you're both Black women. Mm-hmm. And I remember when I started looking for a coach back in 2017, I guess it was 2018, I had a really hard time finding a Black woman coach, first of all, right? And then finding one that I thought would match my personality, because I am type A, and, but I wanted someone that would not be intimidated by me, that would be willing to call me out on things, that would be willing to push me. And that was not necessarily easy for me to find. Um, So for me, having finding the right person and working with the right person was critical in terms of me making the shift that I needed, even before I met you to make a decision. Because by the time I met you, I'd already decided, right? It was kind of like, okay, how are we going to figure out how to do it? But she was the person who helped me realize that I could do something different and that I was not necessarily the problem. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I don't, and you know, I tell people all the time, I am pretty convinced that any other coach would not have been able to do that for me. So why would you say, in your opinion, why does having a Black woman coach matter? Um, And what's the value add? Um, I think having a Black coach matters because they just get things, you know? I mean, you know how you just have those, like, those sister girlfriend moments where you're just like, especially if you're a career, if you're a career, but not even especially, like any, if you're a Black woman who works in America, right? Mm -hmm. Like another Black woman is going to get intimately like what your experiences every day are both those microaggressions those those outward aggressions like all of some of the realities of what it means to be a black woman and actually without you even necessarily like saying it right like because a lot of times you bring out stuff but there's a lot of times where i'm in sessions with clients and i just immediately get it like i get like being dressed in your suit and coming in and somebody like telling you to go go, go get them a cup of coffee right and you're like yeah I'm like, mm-hmm. yep. I'm, so, I mean, and, and I think that Black women get that in ways that other women just can't, won't, don't, right? And there's also that history, right? Like that, just that whole history of what the, particularly like the African American experience is, right. um, or even like the North American Black woman experiences, right? Like that other coaches, I think it's the same thing with like a therapist, right? Like I truly believe everybody should have, have some sort of therapy, right? Because we all got issues we got to work on. And it's a big difference between having a white therapist, right? Who goes by whatever little textbooks and their little pedagogies that they were taught in grad school mm-hmm. and a black therapist who knows all that stuff but also re- realizes one that like inherent and systematic racism within like yeah. the psychology and therapy field but then also the realities of what you are dealing with as like a black woman and in, in these americas yeah and i think i think that one of the things that i've always said to people about this and specifically about why i created the directory in the first place is because I have found often, in my personal experience, because I had worked with coaches before, Mm -hmm. um, that people often question you. When you say Mm -hmm. something, they'll question, well, is that really the way that it was? Or what, do you think you're reacting, you know? And for me, I felt like working with a black woman, I didn't have to validate Mm -hmm. when I was describing something that was happening in the workplace, what, you know, what I felt, they knew what I meant and what I was talking about, sometimes without me even having to explain it. And that's really important because it's hard to get to the things you really need to be talking about in these sessions when you have to go through a whole process of validating what you said with someone because it's not their experience and they really don't understand. You know, they don't really don't understand. Sometimes they really don't want to understand, right? Because so much of a coaching, a therapy relationship, whatever that sort of relationship is, it's about trust, right? And and at least a willingness to be open to some a reality that's different from their own, right? 
Um, and just for me, I've always found that comfort in Black women, right? Like be it my girlfriends, be it my coaches, be it my mentors, all of which for the most part have been other Black women, right? Even when I'm just ha was having, when I worked in corporate America and I just needed to have like a venting session, there will always be, you know, some of my, you know, um, classmates from undergraduate or even graduate school because they would just intuitively like get it, right? Like just get being constantly like questioned, being constantly like nagged, like, being said you're aggressive when all you are is representing zealously whoever you're supposed to represent and why is that necessary why is that aggressive on me yeah um, or, or your, help, tone, yeah. your yes. tone yes your tone um where someone else gets to literally say the exact same thing in a meeting mm -hmm. but when you say it it's mm -hmm. a problem yes but when they say it it's a good point yes yeah and those kinds of things where, you know, you talk about those things and some people will immediately go to the defensive of, are you sure that that's, you know, the way mm -hmm. that it was intended? And don't even get me started on the whole thing about intentions. Mm -hmm. But um, I found that, you know, those kinds of things become barriers when you're trying to work with someone in a coaching yeah. um, relationship when you express something and they're questioning, you know, what you're saying. Um, one, you, you talked about this a little bit in the beginning, but I wanted to go back to it because I thought it was a really great point. You talked about the qualities that people look for in coaches and yeah. the kind of um, coach that, you know, how people should think about what kind, there's so many different coaches, even in, in multiple different categories for people to choose from. You know, what quality would you say a person should be looking for when they're looking for a coach? Well, I mean, I think part of a good coaching relationship is that person understanding who they are, right? And like what their needs are. Like, and I think that to some degree, I mean, I have, I, well, again, because most of my clients are, are pretty type A, they pretty much if you gave their closest chests will lay out a lot of some of what their expectations are, right? Um, but I, but, and I absolutely agree that everyone should do this. Even if, even if you're not the type of person who can say it face to face, then just shoot in an email. Email is gonna be a lot more like passive in terms of these are some, what are some of my expectations for? Cause I'm sure if you have a good coach, they will lay out for you what their expectations and how they envision sessions going. But like, to me, it's a symbiotic relationship, right? Like it needs to be this is the type of person that you get along with. And also that is supporting whatever needs you feel like be, need to be developed and cultivated and pushed forward, right? Like, do you want somebody direct? Do you want somebody more passive? Do you want somebody quantitative, qualitative? Like what type of person, or do you want a little bit of all of that? Like, and then just from a person to person level, right? There's something about like chemistry. Do you get along with this person? Because Coaches can be, I mean, I, I, I can really push my clients because I want to see them live. Like there's nothing I want for my clients besides them living their best life. And my life is not their best life. So whatever I hear them say to me, that is what I am putting back on them to make sure it happens. And when we check back in, like, I want to, like, <laughs> as you said, I want to go through, like, I want to understand like your numbers and I want to understand your numbers. Cause if you can explain them to me, then I know, you know, them yourself. Right. And if you're comfortable with your numbers, then like, there's literally nothing that you can't do in terms of like understanding, like your finances and planning your pathway forward. Um, okay. So it truly is, it truly is, I believe that when someone is looking for a coach, one, I would say like chemistry, there's nothing like chemistry, but then two, understanding where you want to get to. And even if you don't understand where you want to get to, then that's what you need somebody to coach you on, helping you decide what your destination is. And that doesn't mean your destination can't change because we as human beings should constantly be yeah. evolving and switching it up and changing. And if you don't have a coach that's forcing you to think about things, even if you don't necessarily do them, but saying like, well, did you think about this? Did you think about this? Did you think about this? Did you at least run the numbers for this? Is this something you're comfortable with doing and you can respond to that research it and be willing to do some of the work um to make it happen for yourself those are all things and don't be afraid to like drop a coach either like if you go one session two sessions and it ain't working for you that's so if they get offended that's on them yeah like, i think that's true yeah, yeah. I, I guess what you're saying in in a lot of ways is which is the thing I always say to people is you have to know yourself, right? Yeah. Enough to know what it is that you need um, mm -hmm. 
and perhaps spend some time thinking about that before you go out and start looking for someone so mm-hmm. that you have a certain level of clarity mm-hmm. about what it is that you need from the relationship um, so that you can go out and look for it and ask for it. And so, as you said, if you're not getting that, you have the ability to say, this is not working. I need to do something yep. else. But if you go into it, not having any idea of what it is that you want, then you may spend a lot of time working with someone before you come to the realization, I'm not getting anything out of this because mm-hmm. you haven't even thought about what you wanted. And I think that's one of the things I've thought a lot about in looking at this because there's so many different kinds of coaches yes. and so many you know, different ways that people do it. Even if, I mean, there's life coaches and business coaches and wellness coaches and health and wellness coaches and fitness coaches. And so you have to have a sense of what it is that you're looking for and, and, and subspecialties within those types of coaching and some coaches that do life and business coaching and some coaches, and then they're expat coaches. So you have to have an idea of what it is that you want. And part of what I hope I am able to do with the directory is to kind of edu- help people educate themselves about how to make some of these decisions and what to look for so that they're getting what they need out of the relationship. Not only are they picking the right person, but they're getting what they need because the person can be right. But if you don't Mm -hmm. know what you need from them, you may Mm -hmm. still not have um, a good experience. So what kind of person would you say should hire you as their their coach? Um. I say a person who won doesn't get offended easily. (laughs) I I definitely will keep it like super real for you. And I I truly think of the person that is at at a point in their life. And initially I thought people didn't get to this point in their life until they were older. But now that I'm getting some younger clients, I'm realizing when I say older, I mean like 35 and up. That's not old Mm because I'm 43 and I consider myself young. Um, But I would say people who are ready to start living like their best life, right? And are willing to either work toward location independence. Because for me, what I've found in working with some of my clients is that, yes, there are a lot of my clients who want to move abroad, who want to go to like Central America, South America, Paris, Portugal, wherever. But I also now have a small cluster of clients who it's not necessarily about leaving the United States full time. Like they want the freedom to be able to go when they want to go, but they like their house that they, you know, almost have their mortgage paid off for. But they don't, they don't want to, they don't want to work in corporate America anymore. They want to be location independent, right? Mm-hmm. So they want to like, they want to stay in their house for six months and then go to Paris for six months. They can do it. So, and I tend to find that the women who I do well with, like have those ideas in their head, right? Like they know this is what my goal is. Like, how are we going to get there? How am I going to, one, some of it is like planning it out and thinking about it because I'm a big, I don't necessarily have to do this with you because you are at a different place, right? But I'm a big vision boarding. Like, let's figure out what like your vision is. Let's write down like those goals, right? Let's like really, I want you to really think about them and figure them out. And then let's start tying like some numbers to them and make them happen, right? And like, let's start develop, developing business ideas and business concepts and testing them out and doing some really, again, going back to understanding your numbers, cause you know, you, you know, so especially, I, and I have a lot of women who have different business ideas, but again, aren't necessarily that comfortable with like finances or budgeting or all that stuff. And it's in, then it's also like someone like the nitty gritty, like marketing or like Facebook or understanding how to do Google ads or Facebook ads and how to get all that stuff done or even how to get their first like one or two clients in. And then it's like, oh, oh crap, Jackie, like somebody called me, like, what do I do next? Yeah. Um, it's all that stuff. And some people just need, like need, co- because I always tell you like the expertise is there. Like, and if I didn't think the expertise was there, I tell you, because that's what my personality is. But like all my clients have amazing ideas and the ideas like run the gamut. Like every call that, you know, I have with like a client, I'm like, wow. And usually we come up with like 10 to 15 business ideas in that call when I'm doing specifically like business strategy calls. But then it's like a narrowing down of like this 10 to 15 things that we just talked about, like what two or three speak to you. It's not that you can't eventually eventually do them all because I have multiple businesses to set up some are high touch some are low touch it's a matter of what works for you right like this point in my life I like to spend a lot more time with my baby girl on the beach so (laughs) that's what I do right um so it's really kind of figuring out all those things 
and then getting them in a place to make sure they're working for you and just thinking out those like income streams. And then what brings you joy? Like I always like to go back to with all my clients of like, there's making money, which I'm all about. Like, I don't like being broke, but then there's also like joy. Yes. And what role does joy have in your life? Because if you're making all the money in the world and you're still unhappy, like live in America and work your corporate job and just be miserable. Yeah. Just be miserable. Yeah. 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 So it's, and, and, and so it's, it's a balancing of those two. And like, I really am well, like really enjoy working with women who want to figure that out. Right. Like, and then it's outsourcing, right? Like, so it's a matter of, okay, like there's some things you absolutely hate, but like, I'll keep it real. Like some of the stuff with like, like your numbers and all that stuff, that stuff you always want to keep close. Like I have like personal assistant I have all that now who does like a lot of my scheduling and stuff for me but like when it comes to some of my nitty-gritty now some of my bookkeeping yes I will outsource it but when it comes to making sure every month I can look at my 50 or so businesses and understand this is what's making money this is what's not these are what the number like I still do all that stuff myself wow um yeah I think that's uh, yeah that's that's a really key point that you you have to figure out what and that's the thing that i'm grappling with now is even figuring out you know what you absolutely need to do and what are the things that you need to because you can't do everything so you have to you know when you want when you're when you're doing your own thing you have to really think carefully Mm -hmm. but i think and that's i was literally thinking about that yesterday is like i've got you know i'm getting ready to give something to someone else to do and was like i have to hold on to this part of it because i need to be able to you know see the the money right So it's, it's, it's really an important thing to keep in mind is that there's certain things you still have to make sure you're responsible for. Um, but you have to understand what are the things that you can outsource so that you're not killing yourself trying to do everything. Yes. So what are you, you know, this is my last question. What are you up to right now in terms of your coaching? Are there any like new things that you're doing? I know you just relaunched your website and it looks fantastic. Thank you. So, um, what are you, what are you up to? Right so I'm, I relaunched my website. I am only for the remainder of the summer, I'm only taking on four new clients. That's my goal because I'm reducing the amount of one-on-one clients I have because I like to go deep with my clients. Um, and then I'm actually launching my course again. Um, that will come out again in the fall. I have now only do my course twice a year uh, because I just like it like that. And I like to be very selective about the women who are in it. And then I actually also have a, well, the wait list is open. The course is not open itself or the uh, uh, monthly mastermind group. And that's probably my lowest priced item. Um, and so what that is, it's a lot of like courses, a lot of online group chats. It's a really lot of like online vision board. And it's a group like, again, <laughs> you guys get nothing from me from this call is that I am definitely very particular and I like to surround myself and my clients with groups of women who are going to uplift and motivate them. I, it bothers me a lot when people, when I hear women in various groups say, oh, I can't work with Black women. Black women are so difficult, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, that's just, that's not my experience. Like, that's not like, not at all. I, I feel like I'm surrounded by so many Black women, Black coaches, Black women, Black friends who uplift me, push me, motivate me. And those are the kind of online groups that I'm creating for, for my clients. That is absolutely the a great way to end this is I have to say that since I started this journey, like, about, I guess, six months ago, mm-hmm. it has been Black women who have made this possible for me. Mm-hmm. Um, you as my coach, um, Tawana, who I'm trying to get on here as my coach, mm-hmm. and all these women that I've just met in groups um, since I moved to San Miguel, I just have had people just be willing to help me with anything. You know what I mean? And want to see me succeed and vice versa, where I've, I mean, I've met women and I'm like, I'm going to give this to you because I think it'll be helpful to you. And that's why I'm giving it to you. And that's what I've experienced. So that's what I've been trying to give back to other people. So this idea that we're difficult is a myth that's created out there. And some of us buy into it and we need to try to stop to, to, to release that. They're difficult people in the world, period. Black women are not any more difficult. No any other group of, of people in this world. And frankly, I find that we're probably more giving than anybody else in my experience um, and, and it, uh-huh. to our detriment often because we put everybody else first yeah. and don't think about our own selves a lot. 
So that has definitely not been my experience. And it's, that, and it's, it's why I'm able to do what I'm doing is because black women have been holding me up all along yeah. from, from my mother on down. Yeah. So it, that is a myth that I really hope that part of what I'm doing with this series will help erase this idea that black women are not out here. We're coaches, we're helping people every single day. And, you know, as I end this conversation, I once again want to say thank you to you. Um, because as I said, I couldn't be sitting here in my lovely living room with my elephants <laughs> if it were not for the work that I do with you and the confidence that you give me that I can make this work and that I can do this every single time I talk to you. So thank you for participating in this conversation. Thank you for being you. And I'm, we'll be talking in a couple of weeks. Of course um, we will. Call anyway, but thank you so much for everything that you've done to make the life that I have now possible. Okay, and thank and thank you because I, I like I I told you I don't really do social media that much anymore. But when I do, when I'm on LinkedIn, when I'm on Facebook, and I scroll and I see like you and all your glory and your beautifulness and like all your plans and like what you're doing, it makes it brings me so much joy. And it knows it lets me know that the calling that I feel in my heart is real. And I just I, I love seeing you shine. I love what you're doing for other Black women. This coach's guide is amazing because. There's a coach for everyone and everyone truly does need some sort of coach. And we really, really need it. Yep. Thanks again, Jackie. It's a pleasure having you. Love it. Take care.